Uh, related to energy efficiency, very important, we have the next speakers coming addressing uh, fuel poverty issues. Uh, and it's on the topic of sustainable energy for all citizens of Seoul. Uh, and uh, the first part of the presentation will be by Professor Yun Sun Jin from the Seoul National University School of Environmental Studies. Uh, Professor Yun is also a member of the OLNPP committee. And she will be followed by uh, John Byrne, who's a distinguished professor of energy and climate policy at the University of Delaware, and also chairman of the Foundation for Renewable Energy <coughs> and Environment. So please, Professor Yun. 예, 안녕하세요. 방금 소개받은 윤순진입니다. 아, 저희는 좀 색다르게 이 세션을 준비했습니다. 아, 저기 전번 델라웨어 대학교 교수님하고 제가 함께 준비했는데요. 저희는 그냥 따로 따로 이렇게 준비를 하는 게 아니고 하나의 발표 자료 가, 어, 발표 자료를 함께 이야기하듯이 대화하듯이 그렇게 진행을 하려고 합니다. 어, 아, 그래서 제가 한국인이기 때문에 한국말로 하려고 하다가 대화하듯이 하려고 하다 보니까 아무래도 영어로 계속 진행하는 게 좋을 것 같아서 어, 영어로 하겠는데요. 이 발표 자료는 저희 둘만이 아니라 델라웨어 대학교의 박사 과정으로 있는 이주희 양과 서정석 씨가 함께 준비한 것임을 어, 밝힙니다. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, in 2011, the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon declared sustainable energy for all. And uh, this sustainable energy for all is focused on achieving three inter interlinked uh, targets or goals, uh, such as energy efficiency, and renewable energy and universal access. And uh, the, uh, the target is the doubling the global rate of energy efficiency improvement, doubling the share of renewable energy in the ener global energy mix, and ensuring access to energy services by 2030. And especially uh, from this year, 2014 to 2024, is declared as the decade of sustainable energy for all. We think Korea, especially Seoul, can be a part of sustainable energy for all. We prepare the Korean together. <laughs> yeah. There are two dimensions of energy poverty. One is energy available, availability challenge, and another is energy affordability challenge. Energy availability challenge means lack of access or access to modern energy services. And this problem is uh, usually happen in developing countries. But in uh, another energy poverty dimension, that is energy affordability challenge, that is inability or ability to afford the basic energy service, especially during winter. But this phenomenon or this problem is observed uh, not only developing countries, but also developed countries. We think in Korea, we have this energy affordability challenge we have. Yeah, there are three key factors of energy affordability. Uh, the first is energy efficiency of the residents. And the second is household income. And the last one is unit price of energy. So how about the energy poverty issue in the US and in uh, Europe? JB, can you mention it? Sure, sure. Good morning, everyone. And uh, yes, the problem that we're talking about is uh, all societies problems. It is a problem of my society, the US. It is a problem of Europe. And of course, it is a problem of Asia. And uh, so you can see uh, this particular problem if you bin the incomes of uh, different 20% uh, quintiles of each part of society. And uh, so in the US, the uh, poorest uh, members of our society uh, average uh, over 13% of their income to cover their energy bills, whereas the richest spend less than 2%. And you can see a similar pattern in the UK, 15% is being spent by the, uh, the lowest uh, uh, income group, uh, and 2% uh, is all that's necessary for the highest uh, income group. And this dramatic uh, difference is what uh, is often referred to as an energy poverty, 
or an energy injustice uh, issue. And we're going to try and suggest today how we can deal with this problem uh, in uh, uh, all societies, including uh, uh, the city of Seoul. Um, so as background, in order to make this kind of, uh, of uh, um, a problem uh, be addressed properly, we have to have some policy definition. And uh, societies around the world have worked on that policy definition. Uh, Sunjin will talk with you about the, uh, the case in Seoul and in Korea. Uh, I just briefly mention here, in Europe and the US, uh, there are different complicating factors of how you establish this, uh, uh, this metric. What do you want to achieve in terms of reduction? When is energy poverty no longer as great a risk? And generally speaking, in Europe and US, uh, it's something around 10% of your income or less that is needed in order to uh, cover your energy, your basic energy needs. And uh, typically, this is uh, uh, a program, uh, a policy that is implemented through two kinds of programs. One is to uh, uh, provide some assistance in the form of fuel payments uh, to, uh, to uh, different um, uh, fuel providers uh, for uh, uh, families. And the other is to try and make the, uh, the, the buildings that the uh, families uh, live in, find, make those buildings more efficient and reduce the overall energy requirements. And if you look at, the, in the case of the US, we had a little bit of difficulty getting equivalent data uh, on the UK system, but it is basically a very similar system. I want to point out something very important. A lot of money is being spent on this issue uh, in the US. There is close to $5 billion, but actually four times as much is spent on sending fuel payments to fuel providers, and only one-fourth is spent uh, actually lowering the, uh, the energy requirements to live in uh, uh, housing. And uh, the result of that, of course, is that uh, only a very small amount of the real energy poverty is being addressed by the program, even though massive amounts of money are being spent. And I think Sunjin will talk about this matter also in the case of uh, Seoul. Uh, the U.S. also is only uh, providing these services to about one-third of the total households that are eligible under this definition. And as a result, it is only impacting a small percentage of the real income constraint that these uh, families uh, face. So in a wealthy world like uh, the US, it is the case that families are still trying to balance food, uh, payment for other basic services, for children's needs in uh, school, and uh, energy bills. And that is, uh, in brief, the energy poverty problem. So, How about? <laughs> yeah, I will compare the Korean case with the case of the US and the UK. Uh, as JB showed you, uh, we can see the similar pattern here, but maybe the share of the lowest 20% uh, the energy bill of their income is uh, a little lower than two other countries, 12%. But this is the reason is in Korea, energy price is relatively lower than two other countries. But still, uh, you can see here, highest 20% just pay for 1.9% of their income for energy bill. But lowest 20% is over 10%, and the average is just 30.2%. And we can compare the uh, programs to, uh, to address the energy poverty. Maybe we more specifically, we can compare the case of Korea and uh, US and UK are here. Uh, in Korea, we have the term, usually energy poverty is uh, commonly used. And the energy poor household is defined in Korea uh, as a household spending more than 10% of their total income on energy uh, expenses. And we uh, implemented, we have implemented some programs to deal with energy poverty. Since 2007, we implemented the weatherization program, and since 2010, uh, there have been energy bill discount and fuel payment programs. And uh, Sunjin, maybe just uh, mention the, the lowest decile in uh, Korea. How much must they pay for their, uh, uh, of their income? Yeah, we, can, uh, yeah. we have uh, <laughs> later, but that is 21.7%. 21.7%. That is huge. So here, uh, as JB explained, the programs in the US, we have a very similar program. But as he pointed out, we have 
more investment or more payment for fuel payment program rather than weatherization. Weatherization is just the improve, improvement of energy efficiency of low income households, their house. But here, just to pay for the uh, payment. So you can see more, uh, more uh, numbers are covered by this program and the more uh, uh, budget for this program. But you know, the benefit uh, for the household is very small in case of a fewer payment. So it means maybe that payment goes to utilities, not for the household themselves. So, and JB mentioned just 1.63% uh, of energy bill is saved under this program in the US. But in case of Korea, just 0.44%. That is very trivial. <laughs> yeah, uh, this slide shows you the timeline of policies and programs to deal with energy poverty issue in those three countries. So this slide shows you uh, Korea is the later, maybe follower. So we need to have uh, learned from lessons to more advanced countries. So what problems they have uh, faced Maybe we need to avoid that kind of problems. Yeah. So uh, we raise uh, three issue, uh, four issues, and we criticize uh, four issues, and we uh, suggest some uh, uh, to solve those problems. So I will cover the first uh, two issues, and JB will cover two later issues. So. The first issue is, the, as I mentioned, financial support mechanisms currently subsidize utilities and fuel companies rather than reducing energy costs for at least a household. So we suggest to utilize the proposed citizen energy welfare fund in one less nuclear power plant phase two to support energy weatherization project for low and moderate income families, which lower energy bills by at least 20%. And to do that, maybe we suggest again to establish a matching fund target, matching fund target for Seoul's business community to provide 5 million won for every 1 million won donated by citizens to the uh, Citizens Energy Welfare Fund. So uh, we call this kind of approach and to energy poverty initiative. So part one means five year weatherization plan. So if we take this kind of or implement this kind of initiative, maybe total energy saving by 2020 is maybe uh, here 127,000 ton of oil equivalent. So it will uh, account for 3% of the one less nuclear power plant. So the target by 2020. So we think maybe to solve energy poverty issue together with uh, the maybe some uh, to remove the needs for energy supply. That is very important. And the second issue is absence of a broader policy perspective to embrace the energy and environmental burdens of the energy poor. So we suggest to create policies and programs addressing energy affordability burdens, which also lower health and environmental costs borne by at least household. As you know, poor people have had some uh, problems, health problems, because of poor energy uh, supply or heating system in winter. So if we need to uh, reduce the need for energy supply or to improve their energy efficiency, maybe they don't need to pay for energy bills and they don't need to go hospitals because of their health issue. So to do that, maybe to, uh, we uh, suggest to establish database to track households in energy poverty in Seoul. Actually, it was very difficult for us to find out the data to calculate these figures. So in our calculation, through the uh, end to energy poverty initiative, maybe 
we save, it is a net social benefit. It means not just energy bill saving. It includes other social and health costs, reduction of environmental and health costs. So it will become uh, 753 million of social benefit by uh, 2035. So we call this one uh, energy end to energy poverty part two or part one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, and JB, could you give some suggestions for Seoul? You can cover the next two issues. Sure. So I think uh, another aspect that has been learned uh, in communities around the world, in uh, our cities uh, on the different continents, is that we tend to treat this energy poverty problem as though it were simply a technical problem and it's a sort of one size fits all. You come in, you simply replace lights or you do a few things like this and nothing more. Actually the programs that have been most successful have been much more community based they are programs in which community-based, uh, often nonprofit organizations work to identify what are the needs in those individual homes and then to work with the local contractors in the community to do this kind of work. So you fuse the process of nonprofit uh, community agencies and local uh, contractors to come in and go for, uh, go for the, uh, the need to work out solutions that will cut the needs of, uh, cut the, uh, the requirements of energy use in those buildings by, as Sunjin said, uh, at least uh, 20 percent. And if you do that, uh, that community-based uh, approach, which has worked in many places, uh, I will say in the United States we started the other way, but the way that has now worked best is actually much more of a bottom-up community-based approach uh, uh, in the U.S. So all of the programs are now implemented in the U.S. that way. And I want to just mention there's a really important benefit to the city uh, of, of uh, following this kind of approach. So, uh, and that is the job creation that comes with uh, uh, this kind of aggressive uh, uh, community conservation program. Just a simple uh, uh, metric that you can use. For every uh, unit of investment that you send into the current energy system, you can get four times more jobs, four times more jobs, if you simply invest in conservation. And we'd like to see some renewable energy made available to uh, families uh, in all uh, income quintiles as well. So you can get four times more jobs if you put the money not in paying for waste in the old energy system, but instead paying for conservation and more quality services uh, through renewables in the new system. So that's one uh, thing we'd like to propose. And uh, the second one we'd like to propose is, is the use of uh, a measure of on-site uh, renewable energy generation. We worked with the city of Seoul to find out what is the rooftop area of the uh, public housing uh, units in the city of Seoul, and we then tried to best utilize this rooftop area in order to save uh, energy, uh, energy costs, again, for these families. By utilizing that renewable energy, you reduce the energy bill of families and, in this way, fulfill the end uh, of energy poverty goal that we, uh, uh, we are talking about. And so, uh, we made those kinds of estimates. Uh, you have this in your booklet, so I won't take you through all of it, but again, the, uh, the social benefits, the net social benefits to uh, the city of Seoul for this, uh, what we call part two, solar power for prosperity, build the local economy in terms of jobs, and at the same time, uh, provide those social benefits that circulate in the economy, uh, local economy, and a benefit to uh, the citizens. So that's sort of our four-part uh, uh, proposal, and I think, uh, Sunjin, you're going to summarize how we look at this? Yeah, yeah so uh, based on our finding, and critics and finding, uh, we suggest five goals for, uh, uh, five anti-poverty goals for Seoul's one less nuclear power plant phase two. The first one is uh, equitably and effectively utilize the citizen energy welfare fund for energy poverty alleviation in Seoul. And the second one is to establish a five to one matching fund challenge for Seoul's business community to contribute to energy poverty alleviation. I already explained. And the third one is energy poverty alleviation should include measurably lower health and environmental burden or burdens of Seoul's at least community. And the fourth is organize and operate the Seoul Sustainable Energy Cooperation to steer investment in solar power plant for prosperity campaign. 
And finally, utilize Seoul's uh, vibrant citizen movements to lead a community-based weatherization program, green economy, green jobs, and end to energy poverty initiative. Those are our suggestions. So JB, can you wrap up our presentation? Sure. So uh, uh, Sunjib began with the Sustainable Energy for All uh, initiative of the UN, and we'd like to suggest that uh, that uh, Sustainable Energy for All is within the grasp of this city. Uh, OLNPP uh, Plan 2 actually creates the kind of virtuous cycle with its uh, sole uh, Sustainable Energy Corporation and the Citizen Energy Welfare Fund so that you can achieve the kinds of goals that the uh, S4E, uh, SE for All uh, initiative of the UN has done. And at the same time, you can make sure that the citizens, all citizens of Seoul, get to participate in this new future. Thank you very much. Yeah, maybe, uh, 한국말로 말씀드리면 여기 서울시민 모두를 위한 모두가 빠졌네요. <laughs> 예, 여하튼, 어, 그냥 일부의 서울시민이 아니라 아주 취약계층에 있는 그런 서울시민들처럼도 함께 다 껴안고 가는 그게 아마 그 원전 하나 줄이기 2단계에서 굉장히 중요하게 우리가 가지고 있는 가치인 것 같은데 저희가 제안한 이런 방식을 통해서 함께 어, 따뜻한 공동체를 이뤄가기를 희망해 봅니다. 감사합니다.